Okay. Uh, I'm kind of new to this, not so much standing before you, but uh, kind of being left alone to handle it myself. So I, I want to thank you all for coming. I, I do appreciate it. And I know the Lord does. Um, this morning, uh, before we get started, I'd just like to ask you if, uh, if you have any special prayer requests you would like to mention. Darlene Hamilton has sent me a text this morning, and Dan Sugar is through the roof this morning, so they won't be here, and she asked that we pray for him. They remember Dan Hamilton to shoot us up. We have an unspoken thank you. Please remember David Walker. He had a treatment Tuesday for his bladder cancer and he has had a horrible week. Remember David. Uh, I want to ask you to remember my grandson. Uh, our four-year-old grandson spent four hours in the ER last night. And uh, Basically, it was a precautionary thing, but uh, he's recently uh, <clears throat> received a groin injury. We don't know how he got it. And uh, so they took him to the clinic and they couldn't do anything for him, so they recommended they take him to Children's. And he was upset with mom and dad for over four hours, not cooperative at all. But they did a, a a scan on him, they did a urine sample, they examined him on that, couldn't find anything wrong with him, sent him home at 1 30 last night. So, just if you would remember my son Jonathan and my daughter in law Robin and Louisa. Uh, remember Jane, she didn't sleep or anything last night. She, she's a typical Lena. <laughs> Anyway, I, I want to ask you also to remember me as I stand up here. Uh, I'm kind of backward, a little bit shy, and, and until you get to talking to me on something that I like to talk about. Uh, and one of the things I learned a long time ago to talk about is the Lord. Uh, he works in a mysterious way that I don't understand, and probably you don't understand either, but it's kind of like Paul said, uh, I feel the least among you, but God can still use me. You know? mm -hmm. So I've never been able to say no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, this morning I want to talk to you about the importance of fellowship. And uh, if I can read this, give me just a minute. Uh, I want to take my main text out of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And uh, Paul is, is talking here to the church of Corinth. And I'm going to read uh, verses 2 through, through 9. And to the church of God which is in Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ, Jesus called to be saints, with all that is every place called upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, but theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you until the end, that ye may be blameless in the days of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, I hope and pray that I don't get too scattered this morning, but uh, when we think about fellowship, I want to ask you, do you recall where 
fellowship originated from? Can anyone tell me? Think about this. <clears throat> when the, the disciples walked with Jesus, they were taught by him. But they never fully understood all of it. And they did not know what God's plan was. Now what they knew was what Jesus told them about him being the son of God. Why God sent him to die for our sins. And that if they believed upon him, they would have eternal life. But it was not until the Holy Spirit entered the picture that this fellowship truly began. And uh, in uh, Ephesians 3 and 9, it uh, says this, and I'm going to paraphrase if you don't mind. It says, the fellowship of the mystery of Christ. Okay? And, uh, when we talk about this mystery, from the beginning of time, prior to God creating the world and man and, and the earth and, and, and all the animals and everything, God had a plan. It was thought out. It was uh, decided like, in the sense that when God and Jesus <clears throat> decided to create man, they had to have a plan to allow fallen man to allow Adam to reconnect, to communicate, to commune with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. So when, when we come along and we think about uh, God's chosen people being the Jewish nation, <coughs> God not only had a plan for the Jewish nation, he had a plan for the heathen, you know, the Gentiles the non-Jew. And God created the Jews and he created the Gentiles. But his plan was that all of us, regardless of who we were, have the same fellowship to be able to walk with the Father, to be able to worship the Son, to be able to draw from the Holy Spirit so that we too can share in that fellowship. So I'm going to read a couple of things to you that uh, that's going to be kind of thrown out there. It's going to be scattered, hit and miss. But uh, I'm going to begin in Ephesians <clears throat> 1 and 9. <clears throat> and it says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, so we have God the Father and God the Son working together prior to the existence of, of the world. And they're coming up with a way of, if we create man, we need to create a fellowship to allow man to fellowship with, with God and the Father and with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take that and stretch it just a, a small thin line, it created an opportunity for us to fellowship as the body of Christ. So think about just a, just a minute. Why would we fellowship? It's a directive. You know? God said to all his believers that if you draw an eye on me, I will draw an eye on you. So he made he made it a, a, a way, a, a game plan, so to speak. And I'm not much on sports, but I tell you, a well-conceived game plan has probably a 99% chance of winning. And I'm all about winning with the Lord. The 
if he's 100%, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, <coughs> Ephesians 1, 4 and 5. <coughs> According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame for him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to good pleasure in his will. And Philippians 1 and 5, it reads, For your fellowship in the gospel, for your fellowship in the gospel from the very first day until now. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Y'all watch the clock because I'm a clock here. Uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to, to express to you is uh, when we come together, whether it be for worship or for a meal or for any chore, any task that God gives us to continue His work. You know, to reach outside these walls to to others around us, our neighbors, our friends, the lost. Anything that we do, that is part of the fellowship. And we gain spiritual strength from that. You know, we gain joy and a lot of blessings out of working for the Lord. You know, and uh, so there's uh, several different things that you might uh, think about and <clears throat> or not think about in a sense that fellowship <clears throat> means uh, an entire different thing depending on the root word that you derive it from. So there is a word and AC you may help me uh, pronounce this. I pronounce it as it's a Greek word and it refers to a joint contributed gift. Okay? This word in the King James Version, the Greek translation, appears 19 times. Out of 19 times, 12 times it refers to fellowship. Two times it refers to participation. Three times it refers to sharing. Now, sharing could be <clears throat> your talents, your, your, your gifts, your monetary reward, <coughs> your friendship, you know, soup kitchens, pantries, you know, sharing. Uh, what about contribution? This word is defined twice in the King James Version and it's contributed to contribution. What do we have to contribute to the fellowship of the Savior? The entire idea of, of fellowship is to bring God's people together mm -hmm. to reach those that have not known him, those that are lost, those that are backslidden, you know, uh, one of the things that I, I truly love in, in all uh, things, Christian fellowship as a partnership. <coughs> um, in First John one, and I believe it's six and seven. Give me a moment to find it. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. We have fellowship, uh, I'm sorry. We have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. When we don't walk in the fellowship of the Lord, we're outside of His will. That's just plain and simple. 
And uh, being human, I'm sure that many of us have walked that path one time or another. Do you know, uh, and, and I'm sure the majority of us here know, <coughs> when we're outside of our fellowship, when we miss church, or we're sick and unable to sing the choir, or we're unable to stand behind the pulpit and preach, or we're unable to teach Sunday school class, we miss that great. There's a void in that. So when we don't do our little part, there's a void in that relationship with God. When we come to church and we have something else on our mind besides worship, we miss out. We have forgotten the fellowship. You know, fellowship is a participation. It's a coming together. It's a sharing. You know? Now let's talk about the good part. How many of us <clears throat> love the fellowship with a meal? I've never turned down food. <laughs> says this that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that also we may have fellowship with us and we're talking about the apostle and truly our fellowship is with the father and with the son Jesus Christ so think about this thing. when we fellowship with one another whether it be in the sanctuary, in a gathering downstairs, in Sunday school. What about a Sunday school? How about a meal in the fellowship hall? When we fellowship with one another, we're not all fellowshipping among us. We're fellowshipping with those that come before us. We're fellowshipping with God. We're fellowshipping with the Jesus. <clears throat> Um, when we uh, <coughs> when we first say fellowshipping with one another um, we're failing to exalt to lift up one another now I did not get raised in a Christian home although my mother was was a Pentecostal <clears throat> and she grew up that way by the time my mom and dad were married and started having children my, my dad was a coal miner he worked 6 days a week 12-16 hours a day uh, Sunday my father did not spend his day in church now I'm not saying that my father didn't pray he didn't believe in God but my father <clears throat> had other responsibilities that he had to take care of when he wasn't working. So I never grew up in a Christian home. And I thank God that, that he came looking for me. <laughs> so I was 17 years old when I was saved. And one hot August <clears throat> summer day when it was about 98 degrees, I fellowship with a pastor from Tennessee Avenue Baptist Church by the name of Reverend Charles Plummer and one of his deacons by the name of Jim Dawson. In the back seat of his air conditioned car, I gave my life to Christ. And I never even saw it. But it was that first opportunity that I had to fellowship. So Fellowship began when the Holy Spirit came into the picture. Because we're drawn by the Spirit. Yes. And without that Spirit drawing us, we don't have an opportunity or an understanding of how to be saved. Yes. Okay? But uh, somewhere here, oh, okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about the effectiveness. What does a fellowship do for us? And, and I've touched a lot there. How about it refreshes?
refreshes us. It refreshes us our hearts. It enlightens our hearts and our souls. You know, being in a good fellowship, being in a good service, we walk outside these doors and we walk on a cloud nine. When we don't participate, we're not walking so high, we're not stepping so high. Um, fellowship brings joy, provides encouragement. You know, have you have you sat down with a friend or maybe a couple of friends and, and had lunch? That's a fellowship. Why are buddy together? You have something in common. You have a friendship. You're going to share a meal. You're going to talk about things that affect your life. It may be church. It may be family. It may be your job. But if you're sharing that in that fellowship, God tells us when there is two or three that gather together in his name, he is there. <laughs> We have a fellowship. So, uh, fellowships provide comfort and they provide joy and they provide love through that bond, that fellowship. Also, it gives us an opportunity to learn, to gain wisdom, to grow in our faith. I'm going to tell you from personal experience, <clears throat> a young Christian doesn't grow in faith if he's outside the church. True. You can't stand on the outside and look in. You have to participate. You know, you have to pick up the word. You have to be willing to step out. You have to take that shyness, that backwardness, and put it behind you. You know, God gives each one of us a special gift. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm looking for mine. Because okay? <laughs> I've tried probably a couple dozen. I picked up a guitar back in 1974. I still own it, still in the case, still has dust on it. You know? My, three or four years ago, <clears throat> took me to buy a new guitar. The first one I bought was $59.95. <coughs> the second I bought was what, $600? <laughs> you know? And it didn't matter. That first guitar I couldn't play, that second guitar. I I had a good fellowship with Wayne Goldforth. Wayne tried to teach me. And he said, Carl, what are you going to learn? And I said, I want to learn it all. <laughs> I shared this. <clears throat> share this. <clears throat> the Lord tells us basically the same thing. Fellowship with me and I will teach you and I want you to learn it all. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. Learn the word. Learn scripture so that when the book is not in front of you, the words are in your heart. <laughs> Learn to use your gifts. I don't know about AC, but uh, and I apologize for stepping out on this, but what, AC is a great teacher. He's a great man of God. But he was a little bit shy when he wanted, or when we wanted him to stand up here and be our pastor. You feel so insecure, so lacking, you know, but it's not our abilities that we stand on or, or stand up with. It's God's abilities. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. So using what we have, that little bit, you know, means so much. Yes. You know? Now, I was teasing Danny Gator last week. I told him if I had to stand up here, he had to sing. <laughs> Would you come with a song this morning? <laughs> but, you know, I understand. You know, it's, it's 
choke that thing. I heard Danny sing once. In fact, I recorded it as I recorded a lot of things back in the, in the old days. But his song tickled me to death. And he did it very well. You know, it, it was something humorous. It was done in fun. But it had meaning in it, too. It's like, so, you know, we don't ask him to be George Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you can't ask me to be Richmond or AC or, or Brother Mike or, or any of you. I can only be me. Yeah. And I'm grateful that God takes little me and gives me opportunity. Amen. Amen. And that's all I have. Good me. job. Has anyone got anything that they would like to talk about, say? Amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll dismiss. Our Father, we are okay for opportunity and privilege to stand before our fellowship believers and to teach what little we know. Father, we pray that you would use this time and these words to reach hearts. And we pray, pray Father, that we would go forward in, in our daily walk, always in fellowship with you, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These thanks in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.